Hello and welcome to another episode and I uh, hope this finds you well and okay and all your family and friends are okay as well. Yes, we're still in lockdown and uh, we don't really know how long it's going to continue but keep trusting in the Lord uh, because he is our rock and our refuge. Uh, right, uh, right at the very beginning of this episode we're going to have a very special report from uh, our very special reporter out there who has reports, lots of reports, of some very rare utensils being spotted elsewhere in Bath. Hello Bev, today I'm also on the hunt for new species of the kitchen utensil. Today we are going to be looking at the John Lewis species. Very, very rare indeed. Let's have a look around the garden. There's a plant here. Do you reckon there's any in here? Let's have a little look. I don't see any. No, not in this plant. Any on the decking? No, I don't think so. What about in this red plant? No. I haven't found any yet. What about in the daffodils? <gasps> I spot one. It's the potato masher from John Lewis. Extremely rare species. That's amazing. Let's go and look at any others. Any in the furniture? No. What about in these plants? Hmm, I don't spot any. What about you guys? Do you see any? What about in the garden? I think that's quite a likely place for all the species to hide. I don't actually see any though. Look, this is the basketball hoop. Look up here. Stay very far away just in case it come up, comes at us. It's the very, very rare species. The soup ladle. It's very rare as well to be hiding in a basketball hoop. Very strange. Today, we have seen lots and lots of rare species in the hunt of the kitchen utensils. Bye. So there we go. Uh, some uh, very lesser spotted John Lewis kitchen utensils there. Excellent stuff. Thank you very much for that report, uh, young Rosie. And right, we've got a message from the Bible today from Philippians. And it's the next bit of Philippians where we finally reach chapter two. And um, and so I wonder, right at the very, very beginning, if you were in prison, uh, unfairly, I wonder what you'd be saying to the people, your friends. I wonder what you'd be saying to them. Uh, you'd probably be saying something like this. You'd probably be saying, right now, guys, hunker down. Uh, it's time to just close in, look after yourself, look after number one. Keep your head down, keep under the radar, uh, and make sure you're all okay. Look after yourselves, okay? Do you know, but Paul does not do that. He is in prison for the gospel, unfairly. Uh, but what does he do? He sends a message to, to the people. Uh, and this message is, if it was for them back then, if it was for people who, who were in danger of being put in prison, who were under that pressure, under that struggle, that it's for us now under these lockdown times. So what is this message? He says this. Therefore, people of God, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any sh current common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Looking not to your, only to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. So he says, look after one another. It's not look after number one. It's look after one another. He says, value others. Put their needs above your own. And surely that's a message to us as well in lockdown. Is look out for others. Value others. Look out for what their needs are. Their interests are. I don't mean just hobbies. But uh, 
but I, have, I think <laughs> Paul's not saying, uh, I want you to go bird watching. Well, all the people who love bird watching, uh, I think he's just like saying, what, what is, what is good for them? What is going to help them? What is healthy for them? Um, and why? Why should we do this? Why does why does Paul want the Philippians to do this? Why why should we do this in lockdown? Why not look after number one? Well, this is why. And he keeps going. He says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Really interesting bit about equality there says did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage interesting uh, rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death even death on a cross therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and, ev and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. I always want to say amen after that bit, uh, even though it's not written in the Bible. Um, so why do we look out for other one another? Because that's what a follower of Jesus does. If we were a follower of Jesus, it means we have the same attitude to him. We walk in his footsteps. We don't do the same things as he does in terms of we don't raise people to life and heal people and things but we we have the same attitude we have the same mindset as christ jesus jesus didn't say well i'm in heaven i'm in perfect luxurious bliss uh i am in forever happiness and therefore i'm gonna look after number one he didn't do that he he came down to the earth and he he was he is the son of the most high and he, and he left and gave aside, set aside his perfect eternal bliss for us because he knew what it would take to save us, to become a human, to identify himself with humanity, to become the, the God man here on earth and take the punishment for our sins in order that we might have relationship with God the Father. So Jesus did that for us. And so looking after others in this difficult time, surely that's not as as big an ask as what Jesus did for us. So we can do that. We can do that. Now, let me just say, uh, finally, uh, after that, we do need to look after ourselves. Okay. We do need to look after ourselves. But the way we do that is by immersing ourselves in truths about Jesus. It says, if that you have any encouragement from being united with Christ. And so the way we look after ourselves, the way we get this the strength to look after others in these difficult times is by immersing ourselves in Jesus. We are to be found in him. That means lots of Bible reading, lots of prayer, um, lots of just being intimate with God in your own mind, whether it's writing down prayers, whether it's speaking prayers out loud, um, whether it's singing songs about him, or just or just reading the Bible. Then we are to find our strength and our energy in him. So don't give out of your own resources. We're not being asked to give out of our own resources. We can only give out of the resources that we have uh, through the Lord Jesus. Uh, so, as we come to the end of that, uh, just uh, an announcement about these episodes. The episodes are ending. Uh, we're going to keep going and try and get to the end of Philippians. Okay, but then after the Philippians, we're going to end the episodes. Uh, however, we will be doing video specials. So me in the studio here with the cats studio. I love calling it studio. How hilarious. Uh, we will be back. Uh, but we're going to continue with Philippians because it is so relevant to today. And, uh, and not just today, as in this moment, this, these times. Philippians is relevant um okay so uh there we go uh that's all for now uh if you have any more sightings of the utensils let me know and uh see you next episode bye for now <laughs>